First question. I'd start with a squad update. Uh, Damien, any injury updates or anything? No, everybody's fit and available. Um, what's the messaging been like um, all week, basically, with the squad? Uh, same as recent weeks, we just treated them as normal weeks, normal training weeks, same detail. Um, so, uh, yeah, we haven't over taught the process or anything this week, it's just a normal day at the office today. What are your feelings about what Derry will bring this weekend coming to tomorrow? In fact, the fact that I think the cup game was the one win in, in seven, it's been draw after draw after draw up until then. Does that factor into your thinking this week as to how tight it's going to be? They're tight games against Derry because they're two good teams, them and us. Um, Okay, of course, to a tactical point of view, we try and analyse um, who will play. Um, it be a good idea, obviously, of what they'll do. But outside of that, um, I'm, I'm not going to waste energy on what type of energy or what type of reaction they're going to bring or what's their mindset of the players, of the staff, of their fans, because it's time wasted. Um, so it's all been about us after that. We've seen a good bit of width the last couple of games. Sean Gannon has been out hooking that touchline a good bit and Paul's been getting out to him. Is that going to be the same approach again at the Brandywell this weekend? Um, it's been the approach all year, believe it or not. Sean Gannon's uh, the best fullback in the league. Um, so, yeah, he's obviously a tough task tomorrow, but if there's one player that knows Michael Duffy inside out, it's Sean Gannon. So first and foremost, as always, defenders need to defend. But uh, the message has been um, clear and simple with Sean all year. So if you've, if you've decided that he's attacked more in recent games, well, then it's on Sean, not on me. Thanks. Hey, uh, Damien. Hi. Uh, just on the, the squad itself, you brought in uh, a fair few kind of league winners there. How pivotal would they be in the likes of Paddy Barrett, uh, Sean Gannon, and Shane Griffin in the lead up to the game tomorrow, consider they've won the, won the league, they've been there, done it. Yeah, important, I'd imagine. It's a time for men and people to stand tall and puff their chest out, and those three guys are going to do it, along with many others. So, yeah, um, I guess there is a few league titles in the dressing room, but it's a big responsibility as well, and also on the guys that have won a league title, yeah. Hopefully they will win numerous in their career, but... Um, you always have to win your first, so uh, it's going to be that's going to be the case for quite a few players also. What's the plan, David? When are you travelling up? Uh, we're travelling tomorrow. Um, I think somebody said this morning that was in the paper. It must be a hard, a slow news day if that was in the paper. Um, yeah, listen, we obviously spoke to senior players and the younger boys. Uh, they just want to treat it like a normal day, so why even Paddy, Sean Boyd, Griff, they've been around a year, the league, donkeys of years, and for donkeys of years, they've travelled up on the day of a game. So um, aligned with that, we have travelled for big games the day before over the last three years. Um, it's alien to the boys, I don't think they like it. Um, so they'd rather be at home with their loved ones tonight, taking their minds off the game, so I'm absolutely fine with it. Um, so yeah, we're going tomorrow, no, no stress. Come back tomorrow straight after the match, or? Yeah, all those yeah. are in the, the, uh, <laughs> the game. Uh, I know other people go, oh, what if this and let's book this. Now we're going up to play a game, to win the game, and to come home and sleep in our own bed. It's a very simple message. Have you done anything different this week compared to a normal week? No. Um, listen, Waterford, each game gets bigger and bigger. Waterford, Drada, um, yeah, it's obviously subtle things in the background but every week has been the same um, I don't know what you picked up on it what I said to Darren maybe 10 days ago 2 weeks ago as in uh, you can overthink these things um, I remember 2 years ago for the cup final we probably gave them too much detail we probably gave them too much um, the sessions was overloaded with detail the meeting was overloaded with detail they got private meetings with detail, but uh, yeah, we haven't done that this time. It's just, like I said, normal weeks, um, and that's it, keeping it simple. Did you refer back to that cup final yourself when thinking about it? Um, 
I don't care whether it was for the lads or for me, the cup final. Um, I don't, I guess, like going into games, uh, feeling this as if I haven't given them at But maybe I, we, uh, as a staff, took it to the extreme. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, Maybe we've grown as staff and as coaches and as men um, that we've just put trust in our coach and that's not just gone on this week but over the past three years so we haven't needed to hit them with the kitchen sink and that's why I eat tomorrow night and the training leading up to it, it's just been very simple and very normal. You, you know what it's like with a player going for a, or approaching a match where you can win the title, I mean, is it different? Does it feel different? Are there more butterflies? <laughs> All I can speak for is obviously myself at the minute and I'm as cool and as calm, believe it or not, as I've ever been. Uh, the players seem it. They've been training at a real league level and playing at a top level for weeks now. Um, so they have probably the most nervous person in my, wife, in my life at the minute is my wife. Um, she's a bundle of nervous energy walking around the house, just keeps wanting to talk about permutations and what if this happens. Uh, Whereas I don't want to talk about football at all, so uh, there's absolutely no nerves. Uh, should there be? Here yeah, I don't know, but uh, we're calm. Uh, we're very focused, and we'll be highly motivated tomorrow night. Have you spoken about that you will keep focused? I mean, there was an incident at the past Derry game last week where about ten minutes ago, the past fans started celebrating and singing as if there'd been a goal that would have happened in your match against Rotherham, which obviously wasn't the case. False information or whatever, we don't know where it came from. But have you spoken about that kind of thing that they might, when you're, when you're the wrong thing, there might be things shouted at them? Yeah, oh, yeah. Bizarrely touched on it briefly at half time last week in the draw of the game, as in telling them not to let their minds wander. If they do hear a noise or if they've had a bad moment to reset, if they've had a good moment, don't get carried away. If we go 2-0 up, which we did, don't get carried it away. Oh, where's this? Where's it going to put us? Might we win something? Um, so it's not a time to let your minds wander. Um, so that was the message, and I'm sure it will be at some point again tomorrow night, just to win that moment in front of you. Except there's a game to play, there's nothing won yet, but, but you're one of a handful, inside of the Man United players, Roy and Dennis and John O'Shea, you're one of a handful of Irish players to have won the Premier League. On a personal level, what would it mean to you to win the league here at Shelburne compared to the, the two you won at Chelsea? Yeah, was, I hope he said, and I think it made a headline that would be the pinnacle and would wipe the floor with them, but it's not me winning it, it's the, it's the players and a lot more people, so I don't want to make it about me or me be a headline. Uh, it's the players that, yeah, we help them out all we can, Aiden, and give them detail and try and motivate them and organise them, but they're going over the white line, so, um, yeah have a trophy in the Shelburne dressing around tomorrow night. Um, it's the players, it's not mine. So um, yeah, it'd be great, but it's their achievement. Is it a hell for a burden that you've been the best team all season, but yeah, you need the result to go your way tomorrow night as well? Yeah, you listen, you need to be the best team. The best team wins the league, so uh, you need to be the best team in Ireland again tomorrow night. How do you do that? By going to the Brandywell and uh, winning to make sure. So um, burden, hindrance, Everybody's stressed out, nerves. Again, um, and maybe I'm surprising myself with it. Um, I'm not nervous, and I'm, I'm totally fine. Probably the most nervous I've been all year is, was watching Dundalk, Shamrock Rovers the other night because um, you can't affect anything and you're sat in your sofa. So, uh, as much as um, yeah, it would have been nice to maybe win it on your sofa last Sunday. I think the real place to win a, a league title is in the trenches, not in your living room. So, um, hopefully, it'll be tomorrow night. You said last week as well about how many people outside the league of Ireland have been maybe captivated by your story, Shelburne's story, but people inside maybe haven't. The fact that the PFA Awards were nominated were out this week and there's not a Shelburne player on it. Is that going to vindicate your own thinking on that? Well, listen, I know what the, the league is here and um, sometimes if these guys they don't need the individual awards i think you mean player of the year do you yeah, yeah, yeah. um the players know what i think of them um and i absolutely stand over that it's a very pally pally league um whether it be other teams or knowing the right people in the association uh do i uh have pals do i know the right people 
and I hope that I'm not going to change. Um, so yeah, there's not enough players in the team of the year. There's not any up for uh, player of the year. If I ask the 21 senior players today or tomorrow, what's the one thing they want to win? I think I know what their answer will be. What are your own experiences, even as a player, of going in? I was trying to think, were you part of the Newcastle team that went down the last day? Oh, I don't really have a bad way. Is that those experiences of the, of the last day? What have, you, what have you already had in football? Well, I got relegated three times. Um, Blackburn, I was a young boy, probably hit me hard because I, f I felt the responsibility of it. Uh, Fulham, a, cl a club close to my heart, but probably wasn't involved because I had a bad injury, um, but still felt it. And then obviously Newcastle won, I felt it again for different reasons because um, I scored the goal that sent them down. Um, but all these moments, these hard moments in your life, I still would never change them um, because they make you who you are today. So. Uh, and like I've referenced many times this year, pressure, nerves, whatever. I know which end of the table I'd rather be. So, um, yeah. How was the body after last Saturday? Uh, well, I was soon brought down to, well, not that I was strutting around thinking I played well, but uh, I believe it was on YouTube, which I found out afterwards. and. Obviously our famous post-match meeting on Monday involved post-match Strada, but it also involved post-match Drumcondra 11. So uh, there was a three, four minute uh, video put together on myself, Joe and Skins uh, performances by, kindly by Davy McAllister. Um, obviously light-hearted. And yeah, when I look back, um, it wasn't a great watch. Were you tempted to draft Wes Hill here for the final match? I tried to sign Wes. Uh, Wes retired there. I think I tried to sign him for the run in last year for 10 games, 11 games. I said, come over a day a week, two days a week, train, you can stay at mine, if you're making an impact. Uh, so yeah, I did try, try and uh, sign Wes um, because I believe in fairy tales and it would have been nice to have him here. But yeah, here. All comes back to how well you look after yourself. I think there's a, a year, 18 months difference, maybe a couple more between me and him. And he looked like a, a thoroughbred, and I looked like a, I don't know what. So. A dray. A what? A dray. A dray. Do you know That's not a positive. No, they, they, they pulled the, they pulled the, <laughs> the dray. Yeah, yeah. Dray well, yeah. Is that okay? You'll see you. I'll, I'll take that as a compliment because yeah, yeah. I couldn't, uh, yeah. No, you moved okay. So you made, you made a run back at one stage as well, mm. which took a lot earlier when you got back. So. Um, can I ask you? Um, did you expect Derry to be in a better position than they are now? Did you expect them playing Derry for the title tomorrow that they would be in, in it as well? And no, I here, it? Philip, honestly, I've never looked that far ahead because there's, it's been a roller coaster and you can never figure out what's going to happen. So um, I know everybody was fascinated with the Derry game. Um, this will be the. Uh, but I always thought there'd be some twists and turns. But who was it going to affect? I never knew. Um, but uh, yeah, I am surprised because they have some good bloody players. We spoke to Stephen Friday this morning. He was very complimentary about what you brought to the league, you and the club, Shelburne. Um, there seemed to be a mutual respect there. Going back to, he, he felt when you were coaching at Rovers, he saw something in you that he thought you would go on to do what you're doing. Um, he said he likes to have a glass of wine, which he said when the season is over. Just uh, he's in the opposite corner. Your, your thoughts on him and what 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 he has done, and how, how has he maybe? possibly shaped you in some way of where you were? Oh, listen, I've been shaped by many managers and coaches since I was 16 years of age, going over to England. Uh, I guess has Stephen played a part, yeah. But uh, in all honesty, I probably curse him most days. Why? Because he got me into coaching and management and uh, it's all his fault, really, so... Um, what you see, whether it be a positive or a negative, um, right in front of you now, I guess um, Stephen created this. Do you, you not enjoy that? Because you said so much, you know, you need, you need that focus, you know what I mean, in your life, in your life be it as a player, but having, you don't actually enjoy. Of course, life. listen, I'm, uh, I've openly said it's the best three years of my life, um, so when I curse him, here, does it doesn't mean a negative, I blame him. So I'm in this gig, really because of Stephen, how I got into it, 
I don't even know some days. Um, I don't. You ask me or ask you guys at the end of my career, will Damien Duff be a pundit on TV? He said no because he, he doesn't speak. Will he be a, a, a coach or a manager? No because he doesn't speak and he doesn't have a personality, I'm sure he said. Um, but yeah, I am here. Um, and how yeah, Stephen pushed me towards it. I went and did coaching licences because I was a bit bored and I wanted to see what all the crack was about. I was crap hurt my ego, so I decided to do all of them, see if I could get any better. I did get better, and like I said, along the way, Stephen pushed me, Celtic came in, maybe wanted rid of me out of the club, but he said I should go, my wife said I should go, um, part and parcel of the journey. So like I said, Stephen's had a big am impact, along with people at Celtic, along with people, the list is endless. Um, so yeah, curse and blame and whatever, he played a big part in me getting into coaching because uh, he said I should do it, and. Like I said, I don't think I had many other options anyway, so I needed to keep busy. Was it a tough sell, sorry, at the time, even to go into underage coaching? Um, no, well here, that was me that wanted to do underage, and I'd always push young coaches that probably doubt themselves to go down that route. Um, it's been so long ago now, uh, I think I ended up at Rovers and on the coaching staff, because uh, Stephen wanted a bit of help, and. Um, another coach in the building um, so that's how I ended up back there I was obviously never on the books or getting paid because um, I didn't want to and secondly you can't sack someone who's uh, on the payroll and it was only then where okay maybe I got a little taste for it. I think the under 15 league was starting out uh, real doctor's brainchild and I just thought no I'd like a team of my own so I could be correct me if I'm wrong it's a long time ago I, I left Stephen then in the lurch you could say with a uh, but I wanted to attack coaching with a young group, learn, make my mistakes there, and attack. I certainly did because it was 24 hours a day I was giving them. Um, get a lot of criticism in this country. I remember back in the day for getting them out of bed at five in the morning, uh, training at six. Um, well, I still wouldn't change if I went back, I'd do the same again. And here, we're still talking about the same things 10 years later. Young boys in Ireland don't play near enough football. So that was the method behind my madness. Thanks. Sorry, just sorry, just not a personal level outside of football. There seems to be a lot of respect between teams. Yeah, um, I don't think I've fallen out with them. I think there's been a bit of back and forth in the background, but uh, here, like I said, to get where I want to go to, um, I will fall out with anyone. I'm happy to do that, as you've seen. Uh, yeah, at times I don't like the person I become when you go over the white line, but. Um, I think you need to have that edge to get success, whether it be an individual as a team. So uh, respect, absolutely, the job he's done there. Uh, forget it, even about domestically the last four years um, in Europe. Um, incredible. So uh, yeah, respect. And like I said, I blame him for stuff as well. Thank you very much. That's us. We'll have that on the line with him in a few weeks either way. Well, I have to have one with the staff first. So. Um, they're the lows of my life, so I'll make sure I'll have one with them first. All right? Thanks, everybody. Thank you.